is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Tonight for the virtual Daytona International Speedway. Some of the fastest virtual MX-5 drivers on the iRacing service go head-to-head -head with a shot at a trip to the Daytona 24 at a real-life Mazda test on the line. You're not going to want to miss the Mazda Hot Lap Online Challenge Final. It comes to you next on Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. From the Daytona International Speedway, we say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge on Race Spot TV and the iRacy to Esports Network. Where this evening we take 35 drivers over the course of this year and put down some of the fastest laps at race courses all around the country on the iRacing service and throw them onto the World Center of Racing to 15 laps and one champion is going to be headed to the real-life Daytona International Speedway for the Daytona 24 for an opportunity to get into a real-life Mazda test. It'll be a fun night of sim racing action, and we are so happy that you're with us. Myself, Evan Pasoko, Justin Prince upstairs for you in the Race Bar TV booth. The director, Hugo Louise, is downstairs. Also going to be joined by, uh, by Glenn McGee as well, but uh, Justin, first and foremost, good evening. Thanks for uh, hopping up here with us this evening. It'll be a fun night as we watch these drivers prepare to qualify a lot on the line tonight and not a lot of time to get the job done really when it comes down to it yeah the pressure is on to make sure you don't make any mistakes across the racetrack tonight as you said just 15 total laps for when the race gets underway and it's going to come down in part to track position as well these drivers will have just two laps and 15 minutes to try and put down the fastest lap times they can to be able to come away as the winner tonight and obviously this race going to be tons of fun. Also 15 laps. It does mean when you're racing at a road course like Daytona, you are going for over 50 miles. But of course, 15 laps is only so many. And again, all of these drivers looking to be the best of the online side of this Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. They will then go head to head with the driver who got the best hot lap at some of the at-track displays that Mazda has been running all season long at racetracks from Long Beach to Laguna Seca. And of course, everything 
Washington in between on the 2018 calendar. But the big focus for us here tonight is the iRacing service. Somebody who knows a ton about that is with us as well in the booth tonight. Glenn McGee, Glenn, thanks for joining us as well. You're familiar with these cars on the sim as well on the real world side of things. What are some maybe key points we're going to be looking at tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, all, these drivers are going to have a hard challenge. Obviously, the draft's going to play a big effect. Um, I think, you know, they'll want to get the references early and get really good speed through the bus stop because that's where you'll get your run going into turn one. Uh, that's going to be a really good opportunity for you. As well as if you come out of the horseshoe, if you get a good run out of there, you can make a pass to the inside in the turn five, and then your last opportunity is getting a good run off of the onto the uh, main backing, onto the back straight there, uh, going into the bus stop. But I don't, uh, you know, that's not a very uh, high percentage pass there, but we'll see. Uh, drafting will, will play a big role, though. Yeah, we'll see how this one plays out. You're on board with Eric Garcia as our qualifying session begins. And these drivers will have two laps to put down the best uh, time that they can, and that is going to be a big key factor, obviously, in finding success tonight. Uh, Garcia, who we uh, take a look at now, right around the racetrack, he qualified in as the best time from Laguna Seca earlier this year of uh, the 136.818, of course, completely different racetrack that we look at over the course of this evening. Uh, but there are a, a Fun mix of drivers here who we have seen many at times here on Race Spot TV and the iRacing Esports Network, of course, on the road side of things. And even as you look at Matt Boosa, some of the Oval Pro drivers making an appearance this evening. Again, five drivers from seven different qualifying sessions over the course of the year are going to make up tonight's 35 car field. And that is kind of the main precipice is you get that hot lap in, which is something that you can kind of try to practice for many a time. You got a rough idea, I think, what speed you're going to have. But when it comes to a race, and only a 15-lap long race, as we look at Matt Maloney, another driver competing in this one this evening, then I think that's the big question, Mark Justin, is pretty much one mistake. And you put yourself behind the eight ball, going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to recover. So 35 cars, only one of them can have a perfect night. Exactly. They have to make sure that they have a good qualified run as well as not make any mistakes during the race itself because the lap times just alone in practice for tonight's event are separated by just about two seconds. For drivers like Bobby Zelensky, who has experience in all different types of cars across the iRacing service, you're going to have drivers like that to compete with tonight. Plus the drivers who we might not see too often on networks like the iRacing Sports Network too often that will have their time to shine tonight. So it's going to be interesting to see who will step up and be the person in victory lane with the least amount of mistakes tonight. And I have to say a big hi and thanks to the folks over at Mazda Motorsports for being a big part of this. Mazda Motorsports boasts the most comprehensive auto racing development ladder of any auto manufacturer in the world. The Mazda Road to 24 program offers a number of scholarships to advanced drivers up the sports car racing ladder, beginning with the Global MX-5 Cup Series and culminating with the Mazda Prototype Team. The Mazda Road to Indy is a similar program that includes Mazda-powered categories of USF 2000, Pro Mazda, and in the lights in the grassroots road racing the boss does uh, more Mazda should say race on any given weekend in North America than any other manufacturer period you can keep up uh, with all the latest news on them at MazdaMotorsports.com you can also follow them on Twitter at Mazda Racing and I think that's a good transition in as we continue to watch these drivers just now starting their first flying laps on the board with Matt Busa and you can see his current lap time bottom of the screen to kind of talk about Glenn your situation obviously starting to on the iRacing side of things, and I would say a pretty successful transition into the real car for maybe those who don't recognize the name right away. Just kind of tell everybody your story. Yeah, no, I got started just like these guys. So I trained on iRacing, uh, you know, started to develop my my skills completely online, and uh, had an opportunity very similar to this. Actually, racing against many of the guys that you see out here, Matt Busa uh, gave me a hard time. He's, you know, he's very good on the ovals, but he's actually an extremely good road racer as well. Uh, super talent. But um, yeah, I had to compete against all these guys in, in, a real, in online uh, in, in a world competition of esports that Mazda put on. I managed to get to the top of that and was invited to. Uh, the, the Mazda shootout, which traditionally brings grassroots motorsports uh, champions to that, but they brought the iRacers there, and um, I managed to, to be quick in the wet and um, 
continued to be one of the fastest guys all, all that whole event, and Mazda eventually gave me the nod, and, and I won a $100,000 scholarship to compete in real life in the Mazda Global MX-5 Cup uh, presented by BF Goodrich Tires. So uh, I'm actually going to be racing uh, next weekend in the Mazda Global Challenge event, which is at Sebring International Raceway, and we'll be competing there. We did that last year for a $100,000 prize, and uh, we had nine pro champions there. We had the Indy Lights champion there as well, who's currently an Indy driver. And uh, So if it, after this race, maybe you guys want to catch that as well. <laughs> Certainly going to be a ton of fun. Uh, we will keep an eye on that. And again, if, for, uh, for the folks who at home watch it, uh, if you follow at Mazda Motorsports uh, on Twitter and all that good stuff, of course, you can keep up to date with everything going on, uh, both on the real-life side of things. And, of course, everything going on here with the iRacing service. Starting to see our first lap times come in on the left-hand side of your screen. Logan and Clamp, but right now, provisional best time with the 211.945. That is about half a second uh, when you compare it to the practice times, about half a second off of the best time that the drivers achieved uh, in that one. So we'll see if it picks up any at all, but uh, Clamp, it looks like he's happy with one, and uh, that is going to be it. Hopefully he uh, can see that time stick right now. Only driver to get sub 212 thus far, and of course these drivers are fighting against each other. This is the online final of the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge, uh, but it is not all over this evening because of course the big thing is uh, if you win this race, Race, uh, you are going to get a VIP trip to the 2019 Rolex 24 at Daytona. That's where you get to compete against the fastest driver who put down the best time at the at-track displays on the iRacing service. And of course, the winner of that uh, gets an opportunity to actually do a real-life Mazda test. And that's uh, certainly uh, going to be tons of fun hopping behind the wheel, the wheel of a real-life Global Mazda MX-5 Cup car. So uh, a lot on the lines this evening. But uh, And I think it's funny that Glenn points out somebody like Abusa who just that we've been talking about a lot here on the service. Of course, uh, some other names of the road circle. Wyatt Gooden, you're watching right now, as he provisionally goes to number two with his speed charts and tries to see if he could best that his second time around. A lot of these drivers are very well acclimated to very high pressure and intense races like this on the iRacing service. There may be some small butterflies in the stomach early on, but the second we drop the green flag here, once these final eight minutes of qualified around to a close, these drivers are going to be locked in very much uh, well inclined with the service and uh, some of the best of the best no doubt that's how they got this far yeah some of the best of the best right now you continue to watch as good and goes around that's just two tenths after after being the best driver from the road america a challenge for earlier parts of this year you can tell that these drivers have been probably for some of them been working for hours upon hours to make sure they're ready for tonight to hit these kind of marks to try and continue the speed they have shown throughout the year and through the different levels on the road course side. So we're going to see that talent continue for Bale as this night goes on as we look at Good and try to gain his speed through NASCAR 1 and 2. And the racetrack looks pretty empty now, but when we go racing to get after this single car qualifying session, a big thing to keep an eye on that uh, these drivers I was talking with before the race, will get a clamp with one of them, asking them what they're going to expect out of this one. And Glenn, one thing that the drivers mentioned that, I mean, these MX-5s are so much fun at Daytona. As you see, good and throw it into the bus stop there at the back end of the racetrack. That's the point that you mentioned. You really need to get speed off because it's going to bring you all the way around it. NASCAR 3 to 4, back by the start finish line uh, when you dive back down to turn number one, but when you're out there with a group of cars, the draft is going to be pretty big of a factor up on the banking where you see uh, good right now in the number 17 machine getting ready to complete his second and final Q lap. Yeah, that's going to be a huge, huge factor here. And, you know, I'm looking at guys who are, all these guys are fast, obviously. I'm, I'm trying to pick out names of guys that I have experience racing with. Obviously, uh, Actually, Y Gooden and Matt Boos are on Radicals Online, which is the esports team that I'm on as well. So they're teammates of mine. So I'm very familiar with them. And uh, Wyatt, I would look out for. I think uh, he's a very smart driver, and he'll, he'll use that draft. But um, it's going to be. I'd actually like to see Steve Diem come up as well. I think uh, he's very smart as well. But the, the guys that uh, will use that draft uh, the most effectively are going to go up to the front here. So that's the most important. Yeah, and you see uh, the current 10th place car pick up a little bit, so uh, Robles jumps to 8th position as his lap comes to a close, and 
Uh, again, by this time, I think most of the drivers have completed their qualifying efforts. Looks like 24 of the uh, 26 drivers who have made the start this evening have completed a lap. We're looking at Christopher Head to go down the back straightaway. And again, obviously with the road course, it is a different classification. So this first left-hander into the bus stop, this is turn number eight. And then nine, 10, and 11 to come up very quickly. There's eight, then a right-hander nine, a right-hander 10 out of the center, and 11 right there is back up onto the racetrack. NASCAR three to four is referred to as turn 12, and that's how we make up the 12 quarter course here. But it uh, looks like a lot of drivers, Zelensky included, they have that one lap time that they really wanted to focus on and get in just and the second time around. I think you're really pushing that car. If you overdrive it a little bit, your lap's gone, you park it, but you know, you go out there, get a little bit extra to see if uh, you can pull something else out and you can watch Zelensky's time compared to his current logged lap of a 2.13.3 as he looks to improve on that. Yeah, and some of these drivers in these cases too might take this extra time to say, okay, I want to make sure I have my marks all ready to go for when we get underway for the green flag for the race portion because you don't want to end up going into the situation and end up losing time or end up boarding up the tires too, too quick. I think Zelensky at this case might be one of those said drivers. There's, and it's a bit of different conditions compared to when the Hot Lap Challenge came to Daytona for the online qualifiers. It is a one second difference between the pole time for the race tonight and what the Hot Lap Challenge had for round one for this year when they were in the 2.10 second bracket. Yeah, fastest time uh, from the Daytona online qualifier early this year. Again, the online qualifiers uh, took place at about the same order that you saw our at-track uh, competition take place at. Uh, roughly, uh, you know, same schedule length, but uh, a lot of the names that qualified in from that one, familiar ones, Busa was the best with that 2.10.4 in the qualifier. Clampett, Zelensky, Lockwood, and Schwenke were the other drivers who qualified in courtesy of that earlier race. And uh, you see uh, the 83 machine out there on the racetrack right now, just trying to get a little bit extra. Zelensky's already completed his 2Q lap, so all he's doing right now, getting a little bit of extra practice in. Uh, looks like uh, another driver who may be still out on a qualifying lap, the 05 of Matt Malone, as you see him come down and into the bus stop. He looks to improve on what is currently 16th best in the qualifying session. And, uh, he will try to get everything he can out of this one. When you look at now, as all 26 cars have taken a time in the qualifying session, Glenn, how important is qualifying in a race like this at Daytona? 15 laps doesn't sound like a ton of time, and I would expect certainly there has to be a sense of urgency in there, but I mean, it is over 53 miles between the green and the checkered flag in this one. How critical is it to start up front? They'll get a good jump. Well, I, you know, I will say, I, I think all these guys should be happy that, that it is at Daytona and that the draft is available and it's a long enough lap because, you know, we've had these events at Laguna Seca, which is a great track to race at, but uh, it's very hard to pass there. And, um, you know, 15 laps there is much shorter than 15 laps here. So I think it'll give them plenty of time to really, I mean, obviously qualifying is going to bring a lot of the talent to the floor, but, uh, you know, I think it's great to see, to have 15 laps with the draft, with the long lap, and it'll give the best guys the opportunity to, to come up to the top. More drivers just getting uh, some additional laps in. You're going to go on a board with Logan Clampett. This is the lap that currently sits P1, and I don't think is going to be knocked off, so we can just follow him around this Daytona International Speedway road course down on the infield porch of the racetrack, the International Horseshoe, as it's known. And uh, we'll just kind of watch what it did to be so fast as we ride on board with him. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good line, I believe so here, Glenn, in terms of how he's able to carry the speed and make sure he hits those marks to be able to be the only driver in the 2 11s, two minute 11 second bra bracket, rather, but... Yeah, Logan's a super talent. I, I never got a chance to race against him in, in these types of events, but I've been watching him. He's, he's a super talent, but um, yeah, he's being very, um, very late on the brakes, but he's, you can tell he's coming off the brake and right sort of way and carrying speed through the corner and that's really important especially coming onto this banking and again the bus stop I think is is probably the most difficult and most important turn to get through fast and also carry speed onto the straightaway so we'll see how he gets through there he's uh, approaching it now and yeah, we'll keep a particular eye on him as he comes off of the banking in uh, what is turn two on the two and a half mile oval 
of course, racing on this 3.56 mile road course. We'll see him swing out to the right hand side and then get that hard entry in. A little bit of overcorrection early, but he gets into the center using a lot of those curves in and out. And uh, that is what the best lap of Daytona looks like so far. Again, that lap of 211.945. Unless somebody, for whatever reason, hasn't put down that second lap and has got something up their sleeves in the next half a minute, he will be starting this one from the top. Again, all 26 cars in this race did take a time at a qualifying session from the fastest to the slowest lap in Q is only one and a half seconds of difference right now. Yeah, that's even tighter than what we've seen in practice for tonight for the drivers that are getting ready for the for tonight. So really quick lap times, and we're going to see them, I think, even more so try and push themselves even more so while having to make sure they can manage the traffic and make passes through these 15 laps. All of that being said, the qualifying session is drawn to a close, and we're going to get set to go racing from Daytona. So let's go trackside, take a look. This is your Race Spot TV starting grid for the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. That 211.945 does hold up. It'll be Logan Clampett starting this one from pole position, and he will be joined by the 17 of Wyatt Gooden, who will start Wyatt Gooden, should say, on the outside and second. The difference between those two, you can see just under two tenths of a second. Next two cars at a qualified grade, it was Brian Lockwood, who starts in third position, and Matt Busa rounds out your top four. In the fifth spot, turns out to be the real world teammate to Glenn McGee and Gresham Wagner, who will start alongside Robert R. Hartley. In row number four, it's going to be Giuseppe and Naki alongside Jeremy Robles in that eighth spot tonight. Continue it on through. It looks like you've also got DJ Alessandri in ninth position, and it'll be Luke Pleffier in 10th. Travis Petrie rounds out through 11th position, and down there it is Stephen Diem out midway through the field in, 20, or in 12th position. Yeah, right behind that in 13th, you got Jake Fenderman, who will try and move through the field a light swan side, Michael Borden, with Jeff Lovo and Matt Malone in the 15th and 16th spots tonight. It'll be Nick first, along with Cody A. Harris, Tom Rathy, and Joshua Chin, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And right behind that, in the 21st spot, Joe Cole, alongside Christopher Henn, Travis Swanky, and Jonathan White are in 23rd and 24th. And look who's at the back row here, guys. Bobby Zelensky and Eric Garcia. So Zelensky, one of the top drivers from round one, for the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge, having a go from the last row. Yeah, both of those cars really struggled in the practice session, so it doesn't appear to be uh, that it was some sort of specific issue in the qualifying side of things. As the field now begins to roll to the bus stop, and we are going to get set to go racing tonight from Daytona Beach, Florida. Of course, as we mentioned, this race 15 laps. That means as we go racing around this 3.56 mile race course, we're going to be going for just over 53 miles tonight on Race Spot TV on the iRacing City Sports Network. So happy that you're with us. These drivers have qualified in over the course of seven different time trials through 2018. They have gotten to this online final, but only one of them is going to get that VIP trip to the Rolex 24 at Daytona and a shot to go head-to-head -head with our at-track champion to win that Mazda MX-5 real-world test. Pace car going to be dotted in. Logan Clampett's 44 going to be the first one to dive it down into quarter number one from Daytona as we look for the base car to leave these drivers off and we are going to go Mazda Hot Lap Challenge final racing from Daytona. Green flying in the air. We're off and away and it is a good jump. Let's watch the field though. First time trying to get all of them down into turn one. A pretty, pretty solid start, but already drivers trying to go three wide and very aggressive on the outside right behind this front group to try and gain as much time as they can to try and get into the best track position they can before everyone starts to spread out. 
And you can see your race leader getting a little bit of extra space, but behind him, a lot of two and three wide. It's going to be a safe defense a second for Brian Lockwood behind him. Looks like Wyatt Gooden breaks out of the pack a little bit. And the next driver trying to move up is Gresham Wagner, who uh, just mentioned, Glenn, your teammate, he's making moves early on as he picks up a position on a Matt Boost, the two drivers you're well acquainted with. Yeah, I'm acquainted with all these guys. I watched uh, Wyatt got a bad start on the outside there, uh, starting in second place, but he covered well. And congratulations on all the guys getting through turn one safely. That's that's a really good job by everybody. But yeah, it's um, Boost is in a good spot. And uh, you mentioned Gresham Wagner. Yeah, he's my teammate in real life, and I coach him as well. He's a rookie driver in, in real life, and he's an amazing driver in real life. And I'm kind of, you know, we coach online as well with our team with Six Sideways Racing. And uh, it's really fantastic to see him doing so well in the simulator, uh, coming from real life to the simulator and doing so well against these, these guys. So uh, really uh, kudos to him. So I'll be watching him with uh, a lot of interest in this race. First time seeing these drivers up it on the uh, big oval part of things. It's about 127 miles an hour is where they top off. As you're going to get hard on to the brakes to get down it into the bus stop. Most everybody single file as you see them all zip through there. And a critical part is the exit here. You're going to get a big run off to go all the way down uh, through the end of this race course. One driver got a good run off of the bus stop. Looks like to the outside that is the number three machine. To the outside of Jeremy Robles. He makes a move to the outside. Also a car going the wrong direction. Wyatt Gooden, who is second in position, has to drop back. I believe he may have been hit with a cut course penalty in that uh, chicane, the bus stop at the back straightaway. He gave up a ton of spots. And then we watch a side-by-side -side battle through the start-finish line, Busa and Wagner. Yeah, nice side-by-side -side battle after Clampett had such a good start to this race to get point away, but just shows how much time you can close up depending on how well your sectors are already near close together up at the front at this point, as it looks like Gooden might have a situation he's pulled off. And we'll see if there is an issue with him. He had uh, just apparently been hit with some sort of an issue after starting in second place. And what well, we said, only one driver can have a perfect night. You don't really get a bunch for finishing second or third in this one. And he threw away a ton of time with what we assume is a penalty. And uh, we will see if that's the case or maybe a technical issue, something on the hardware side of things. Kind of the sim race at equivalency of a, me a mechanical uh, failure or mechanical gremlin per se is uh, an issue on the sim side of things. But uh, as you watch the battle continue, up front here. It is still Logan to clamp it in front, but Lockwood under attack for second position. And behind him, it is Gresham Wagner very aggressively trying to dig at the back end. They went way wide that time on the exit of what is quarter number six. And then we'll get back up and onto the bank and see how well they can utilize the draft. Yeah, right now you can tell Logan is the strongest in the inner portion of the track, the inside part of the road course. Then when it gets to where this portion of the track is where there's the draft to pull him back in, that's where drivers are able to gain back the time through the NASCAR portion of the racetrack approaching the bus stop as Wagner executes a perfect pass to get by Brian Lockwood to go on the inside right before the bus stop. And now he'll try and focus his sights on Clampett. It's about as nice of a move as you can make. You step out, make the pass, and uh, critically getting it clear before they got down into the bus stop, and he will take over second position. But look at the run. These two drivers, second and third, are getting. You're on board with Abusa, who rides in fourth position. They're going to catch up to Logan to clamp it with the big head of steam to the start-finish line. Nowhere for Wagner to go, but to the outside goes Clamp it, and to the inside goes Matt Abusa. Three wide for the race lead with two laps complete from Daytona and it's going to be the driver way down low Matt Busa to the race lead in the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. What a move as Lockwood on the outside gets pinched out Clampett takes second back and Wagner now wants to fight for third and this is a tough battle here. Wagner able just to begin back to single file for that battle. But remember, Clampett's been strong in the first couple laps in this infield portion. The question is, can he make the pass again? We've seen how much that draft plays into the factor of how you're able to take the lead by the front stretch here at this racetrack. That's going to be the big question again. Is Clampett down to inside a quarter of a car length? 
We have not seen the same car lead in any consecutive laps. In fact, your pole sitter, Logan Clampett, technically hasn't led any because he got beat to the start finish line by Lockwood the first time through, even though he was able to successfully defend that position into quarter one. And then, of course, the last time you saw Matt Busa take it away from him. Here they come once again out of the infield section to back up and onto the bank in the left-hander in six, turns into seven, which is NASCAR one and two. And you see him slowly get up to speed, 105 miles an hour, about 20 more to go before they top out, but another move for the race lead, and Clampett wants it back he'll go high side down the back straight away, not a ton of speed, might be a game of chicken into the bus stop, and I think Boosa doesn't want to deal with that he wants to get in line, and I think he will be given a break there by that 5 of Wagner who lets him back in line and just like that, Logan Clampett back to the race lead, still at lap 3 and they continue to trade spots right now by executing the draft to perfection right now, I think, right now. And Glenn, you talked about how much the factor a little bit the draft would play, especially in some portions of the track. It's really starting to get to that point, especially once they reach that front straightaway to the point where everyone's just trying to get up to the lead the second they get to the strike. Yeah, we got a seven-car breakaway now, and you can see how big the draft is. Uh, Logan was getting a great run off of uh, onto the banking and through the bus stop, and you know when Busa took the lead, I think he came back from as far as fourth. And now they're all spreading wide into turn one, uh, and you know I think these guys will be trying to somewhat work together in the back to to whittle this field down to as many guys as you can, and then the guys behind them, the group behind them, hopefully are working together to catch this this group up front. It is that 70 car breakaway all separated by just that uh, less than half a second actually the last time by and you go on board with some of the chaos now but it's Wagner, Clampett, Lockwood, Busa looks like Iaducci also Hartley and Alice Adrini in this battle uh, and that is your top seven and it's about a two second gap back to the eighth the ninth place cars and you'll have packs further on back the draft to keep it everybody together but uh, step one be the top seven get in this lead group try to stay as a pack and listen not everybody but he's battling for the race lead. If you're you know, some of the back two, three cars, you just cannot afford to lose contact with those guys in front of you. Uh, the draft it could make or break your night, and it uh, almost looks like that the back uh, two there uh, drop it off a little bit as uh, the 10 and the 42 want to make it a nine car pack, but they're just a little bit shy as you see them there down and into the quarter uh, as they try to get it boarded. The back driver in that pack, they're trying to keep up with those race leaders, but slide it a little bit. And uh, of course, if they get too far out in front, it's going to be difficult to catch, but your race leaders continue that charge. You see those front seven down the back. A lot of drivers closing into the bumper, but no moves this time and down into eight. Yeah, but right on behind them, there was a bit of bump drafting, so drivers are starting to get a little testy in terms of that and down in the draft. But watch the still that possibility if, as long as you get the proper gear shifts, to maybe have see this possibly turn into a nine-car draft once again. That depends, though, what's going on in the back. As you can see, though, the bump drafting once again getting underway of NASCAR 4. And I mean, you got cars pushing each other. Boos has got a uh, hitchhiker on the back. Bumper is now to the outside. He goes to triple five in front of them. The battle for the race lead to the outside of the racetrack goes Wagner. It's a fight for first and a fight for third. Down into turn number one. You're going to try to work both the inside and the outside lines. That a blimp shot right there into turn one gives you a perfect look at just how the momentum swings when you have that preferred line into the corner or not. And again, Logan Clampett does not lead at the start finish line but successfully defends the race lead and an issue looks like further back in the field an issue uh, Malone goes around in the 05 machine and really struggling in the opening uh, sector of this race course and he had a little bit of help he got touched by Robles it looked like and Matt Malone got turned and I was right about to get to him too because before that he had been the biggest mover of the race up to the 10th spot leading that second group that we were starting to talk about it before. Had a little bit of contact with Robles, sends him to the shooting hard to the right. He drops all the way from the top 10 to 23rd because of that spin. 
It'll be a tough break, of course, no full course cautions. So that may be it for the driver of the 05 machine uh, as you see your race leaders. And this is kind of one of those things where 15 laps and, you know, five laps into this, we've already seen nearly six, seven different lead changes. And again, Gresham Wagner soon as your race leader on the top of the scoring pylon because he led at the completion of lap four. I'm sure Clampett would like to lead just one of these laps. How do you pace yourself, though, Glenn, as we go on board with Clampett or, sorry, on board with Wagner there, look it up at Clampett. I mean, if you really wanted to, could have dove to the inside there and made a move. And I guess there's always a concern that if I'm not making a move on the car in front of me, that Busa could have given up my inside and tried to fight me for seconds. So how do you balance that over the course of the 15-lap race where you may be tempted with opportunities to make passes, but you really don't need to right that moment? It, it's so hard to do because, like you're saying, you're, you're, you're trying to, you're almost defending the guy leading if he's smart. And I can see Gresham's being very smart. He's driving this like you would a real race. Uh, and you can see his experience there. But he's, he's almost defending the leader, um, it, but trying not to be attacked by the guys from behind is so difficult to do. So, uh, But I can see him sort of backing off when he needs to and then getting the run with the draft and just trying to hold on and maintain, you know, a position at the top three. But you can see almost three, four wide there as Logan Clampett actually went down to the flat of the racetrack to protect against the run from Mabusa as Wagner had gone to the middle and it was Brian Lockwood at the very outside and somehow through all of that it's another lap led for Wagner. He'll slide to P4 though and Logan Clampett with again a successful defense of the race lead continues for the moment to hold off this hungry pack of race cars that will not leave him alone and uh, it looks like it is an eight car pack. Looks like a Michael Borden in four or in eighth position, sorry, in the 42, has been able to hang on. He was one of those drivers that was slotted back a tad bit. So uh, eight or nine cars in this group. You look out of the back of your race leader at the uh, hungry hound of pack cars behind them. A long way to go in this race. Just one third through this 15 lap distance for the Daytona International Speedway. Turn one seems to very much be the exciting point, and that's kind of concerned me. You don't really normally think about this kind of a Daytona race like you would a race on the oval here at Daytona, but I mean, I'm going to be concerned just that if I'm leading this race out of the bus stop on a final lap, how much of a run all those cars behind me are going to get. The main thing that we're looking at right now is the dive down to turn one when we're two, three, and four wide, but that could very well be coming to the finish in a little bit here. That, that does make me nervous too, and I'm glad you brought up that point because of how much we've been going three wide into the trial at the start and finish line. I wouldn't be surprised that, say, in a couple laps, Clampett ends up falling back to, say, second or something and decides to play the strategy game and wait to fall back and get the one to try and retake the lead, say, on the final lap. But there's still a ways to go. He's in the best position to do that, being up at the front, leading a lot of these laps and being the head of this front draft group that is starting to try and break away into almost five cars at this point. Well, certainly you're going to have to keep up this pace over the course of this run. You, you see a couple of sets of side-by-side -side still, and as we come into the trialful here, part of the racetrack, you see Clampett go down to block. Uh, looks like that is the 26 Lockwood who stays high. There's the 5 of Wagner way on the outside, and uh, he's going to go a little bit extra wide. Now there's some contact, and the 5 is going to get tagged. Wagner contact. It looked like it was Alice Udrini who got into it. Both of those cars recover, but not good news with a five car now damaged and much further down the scoring pylon. And that's got to be a very tough break. Lots of damage on the left side of that car and all started with that stack up I think in the second spot that we've seen with Lockwood and Bosa starting to make contact a bit. You see Wagner on the outside backs off with that. You see them stacking up making the contact there with the 191 machine of Azdorini, pardon me, and ends up spinning him up. Able to still save the car, though, but that loses him the lead draft. Yeah, yeah that's, that's gonna, a huge I, shame. Yeah, that's going to be the big thing, I think, Glenn, is the, the five might yeah. be able to go the way he is now, but, I mean, looks like he's racing back there with the 10 car. Uh, so, that I mean, they can race with each other. He might have the speed, but look at the gap. There's your race leaders coming into the quarter now, and you can see those two in the distance. It's going to be nearly impossible, I think, to get that gap back. Well, and... Yeah, I don't think he will, and it looked like he may have had some alignment damage as well. Obviously, his arrow is going to be hurt a little bit, so maybe if he gets behind this guy, that uh, lets the guy behind him around and then drafts up to these guys is his only chance. But, you know, really, really good job. Really impressed with him that he's even 
you know, as good as he is in real life, and then able to come with uh, with some of the best guys in the world in uh, on the simulator as well, and run these cars was really impressive to me. So, uh, you know, hopefully you can get back up there, but I think it'll be a really hard challenge. Continue to monitor to see, but there's that big gap from him and up to the kind of trail lead car of the lead pack, which is Robert R. Hartley. At the back end of this pack, of course, there's again a side-by-side -side move to the outside of the racetrack, thinking about it, but uh, kind of one of those things where you can make a move now, but all that matters is where you position yourself for the end of this. Just stay up in this group, going to be about halfway home this time by as the race leaders once again go side-by-side. -side. Outside of the racetrack, lap led for Matt Busa, but on that outside, that wider arc in turn number one, it should be clamped again for the umpteenth time successfully defending he does and how about Larkwood there nice little boom he'll take second away Busa gonna sit in third and now a battle for fourth and he gets a little bit tight there with Borden and Iannucci there side by side as well as they come into the horseshoe yes side by side still but Borden does I think have that preferred line to maybe pull off and away and he's doing exactly that just able to get back to single car lines here right before the quick right hander here for this tight tightish hairpin to be able to defend the four spot Borden. And now it's about the difference of braking points. You see how close some of these drivers are getting because of how they are on the brakes. Some of them more aggressive, some of them getting later, some of them backing up the corners a little bit. And it's checking up some of the drivers a little bit more as they head back onto the NASCAR racetrack one. Yeah, you know, I'm just watching uh, watching Logan. He's he definitely has speed on everybody. I think, especially if you watch him coming off of uh, when we go through this bus stop, uh, coming on the straightaways onto the banking, he, he gets a jump. But also going through this bus stop, he gets a jump. But I really see him really strong here. And um, you know, the guys need to make a decision either. I would be either defending him and pushing him down the straights, or or maybe possibly trying to get in a fight with him and shuffle him back. I think that's the only way they're going to beat this guy. So uh, let's see uh, let's see how it plays out. But he's looking extremely strong. We'll see if they hide that advice uh, for certain as uh, two cars come out of the uh, bus stop there side by side. It's going to slow all of them down, though. You see the fight right now. And uh, the pusher in all of this is, uh, again, DJ Allison-Drini, who and is trying to give a little bit of assistance to Borden. Borden came side by side out of the bus stop uh, with Iaducci there. And, Needless to say, both of those cars get a little bit tight and to the uh, inside of the racetrack, way, way inside goes that move for the 191 machine as they fight three wide for the race lead also in front of us and Logan Clampett wasn't able to go down to the inside. So Matt Busa got a real shot at this thing on the very inside. They'll dig hard into the corner. Yes, sir. Matt Busa takes that preferred line away. It also snatched the race lead away from Logan Clampett all of a sudden. Has to go for a pass on the infield portion of the racetrack for the first time in quite some time. And the way he executed, though, Bosa, too, he went right from behind being locked behind Walkwood to cutting down to the inside before Clampett could even have a chance to even react to go for the block to take advantage of the run. I think a really good executed move to be able to take the lead for now. See how uh, all of this plays through. I'm curious when you when you have to factor in the uh, the oval part, which is you know isn't necessarily something that's a, a big part of most of these races. Is looks like Iannucci uh, with a little bit of contact as he got together with Hartley. Both of those cars able to recover without further incidents. Uh, you know what? Uh, the other racetracks that these drivers qualified into this thing through Glen. I, I don't really think we have anything like obviously the banked part at Daytona. Places like Lime Rock, Watkins Glen, Road America Gateway. Certainly straightaways are places you build up speed you go hard to break down it into a corner but I'm curious how much focus these drivers really put on the infield portion of the road course here when they know if you just stay next to cars the best passing zones are probably up there on the oval yeah I'm, you know I'm watching for that very thing I'm watching the guys that are sort of taking care of their tires on the infield and then using you know let's say Matt Boos in the lead or Logan Clampett's draft to make up the difference and that way they'll have a stronger car at the end uh, and also you know it gives them the ability to learn how well that draft's going to work on the on the final lap you know because I, I think that's how this is eventually going to play out 
We watch them go now through uh, again what is NASCAR 3 to 4 on this racetrack, turn number 12. And Abusa learned, obviously. He saw Clampett protected below that double yellow line, and uh, that's where he goes now. So it is significantly harder that long way around the outside of turn one to complete the move. 3 1 again. This time, I think it's the first time we've seen Allison Drini go way up top since the very start of this race when he took to the green flag in third position. And Abusa once more holds off the 44 of Clampett. So these drivers all very familiar with one another. Certainly the top two are as we go on board with our current fourth place runner. There's a move for the race lead inside. The 44 of Clampett going to make a dive down into turn three and he has got it. First time the race lead's been exchanged down there for a while tonight and the 44 clearly wanted that spot back and he's got it. Yeah, again, showing the, the speed he has in the middle portion of the racetrack for the infield, rather, to be able to make the pass in Sector 1. Sectors 1 and 2 has been the strongest clamp it has been to be able to stay up at the front on top of having the bus stop to be a nice pass once again to get that job done. Now, the main thing is, though, guys, you can see here the draft with this lead group, the second group. They currently have a four-car tandem lined up just behind this about a couple seconds back, exiting onto NASCAR 1 right about now. The thing is, is there going to be enough time for this group right here, especially if the back two join in, do you think, Glenn, to catch up to the lead group with six laps to go? You know, I, I don't see the lead group really. I mean, they've had opportunities. Uh, the top four definitely have had opportunities to break away from the guys behind them, and, and they continue the fight. So, uh, you know, I don't see anybody really uh, looking to get the breakaway or at least thinking about it, or somebody is in there sort of throwing a wrench in, in that sort of plan. So if, if all these guys behind work together, stay single fly, file, and push each other, I uh, can just start to catch a, a whiff of that draft, then, then they will be there. But it's, you know, it will be tough. It'll be difficult for sure. And these drivers this time by going to take just five laps left to go from Daytona. A ton is on the line tonight, but flying on the outside. Look at that move. Not even close as all the way to the race lead goes Brian Lockwood from fourth position as this lead group of seven gets a little bit more antsy. Lap by lap in contact with the top two as Clampett got into the back of the 26. And it is is not going to deter him from going right back at him trying to look to the left hand side he will force his way there and this lead battle once again going to go into the international horseshoe it's where Clampett took the race lead last time and there's going to be contact oh, no. Clampett turns Lockwood and that is very unfortunate there it looks like there because Clampett Trying to defend on the outside with Lockwood. Lockwood going to lose a heck of a lot of time. Look at the race spot TV replay for this. They're side by side, but what causes the issue here is the exit for Lockwood. Lockwood ends up pushing up, hits the right front of Clampett. He spins around, and now Lockwood falls all the way back to the middle of the second group. Clampett to the middle of the first group, Glenn. Yeah, I don't know that, you know, from that angle, I'd like to see another angle, but it, I don't know that we could put that down to clamp it. I think uh, Lockwood had sort of opened his line and, and did what we call pit maneuver and pit maneuver himself uh, off the track, unfortunately. So I don't think Clampett really had anywhere to go because that curbing on exit, if you hit it wrong, or, you know, uh, the car flies off the track. And I'm, I think it was just... Uh, Honestly, Lockwood, from my point of view, uh, opening his line and, and causing that uh, from what I saw. You may be hoping that the 44 gave him the spot, but uh, I'll agree with you guys on that one. Looked like a little bit of a wide exit as he tried to get back to the gas soon. And that is the driver giving it everything. Another driver now spinning. It's Allison Drini way out into the sand as he got turned into the bus stop. But a back straightaway is where all of this went wrong. A second look at it will show that as uh, they went into the stop, he just got a little bit tail happy. You'll see it here. He tries to steer into it. And by the time he got to turn that car right, it just snaps. He could not hang on. And he kind of spins out all on his own, off and into the runoff, slides to the grass. And that is two of our top seven gone in a matter of one lap from Daytona as this race with one less lap to go now at lap 12 continues with the remaining five cars up front.
We talked a bit about the importance of the bus stop a little bit, especially Glenn noting that that case carrying way too much speed. Now it's about, it's really shaking up who's in this front group. Because remember, this was about a six or seven car group at, at just a couple laps ago. Now all of a sudden, just five cars remaining in this group. And that can open up the door for everyone else starting to stack up six on back. That's drafting up behind them, especially having the lead drivers in that group to help out a little bit. It's going to be an absolutely wild final few laps, I think, uh, at this point with the way things have gone in just in the past couple minutes. Your lead car is the top five. Those are the five that we've been expecting. But that's that second group that you were just looking at. They're six and a half seconds back. It's you know, Robles and Wagner, uh, Feinerman, Lockwood, Chin, all those drivers. Not really fighting all that much with one another. Of course, when you're single file out and on the oval, you're going to be faster. Six and a half seconds is an awfully tall order to make up. I think their best hope is, I mean, all mayhem breaks loose, maybe, in that lead pack. You can see the gap <laughs> there. It's going to be nearly impossible, I think, Glenn, for those guys to get there in time. But you never know with the way that we've been going three four wide down into turn one anything's possible so if i'm p6 i am not letting off at all as we once again watch a battle for the race lead this time on the attack it is logan clamp and he's got it outside with the race lead again yeah right now you can see again back to single fall back to where clamp it's the strongest as Remember, with that slight, with that contact maybe for, surprisingly, he did not end up with very much, if any, damn aerial damage. So it might not be the biggest effect for Clampett right now from that incident from a few laps before. The thing is, is there going, is he going to be in the proper position to hold off a driver like Buso? And you can see right now, he's getting to where he's starting to get very defensive through this trial, though, and trying to see what's going to have to work here. It might come down to a block like that in the last lap to make sure that a driver like Ian's Nick, Ian Naki or Busa does not get the run and go right by him, right at the stripe, but side by side. Certainly you're going to have to make that race car wide. How much are you thinking of that now, though? Still uh, with that time by, three laps to go in this race. These drivers know the draft's going to be critical, and I think the longest point on this racetrack coming to the start finish line is up and on that banking with the draft. If, if you're clamping, how can you kind of keep that out of your mind, Glenn? Because you can't only focus on that. Certainly you want to put yourself in a good spot, but, I mean, you have to know what's coming. Yeah, you know, well, you can see, like y'all pointed out, he, he is experimenting and, and trying to see how this is going to play out. I think uh, he's definitely the strongest off of the bus stop uh, this whole race. It, it, and it, unfortunately, it might end up being an Achilles heel for him because he gets such a good run off that Busa just gets this mega draft leading up to the line. So um, I don't know how he's going to play this out. It's, it's such a nerve-wracking thing when you're fast enough to lead a race, but uh, the draft on to start and finish is enough to, for somebody to get by so it's hard to uh it's hard to play that out you can see he's trying to pull away right now um he's gonna see if that works out but you may even see him fall back to second place and, and try and get that mega run that he gets off of the bus stop and get around let's say if boost is leading or one of the other guys it's kind of that age-old question would you rather uh, be the predator or the prey coming to the start finish line you want to lead you want to be in second and do you want to be third or fourth? I mean, any of these positions, it all comes down to that run off of the bus stop to make a move to the line. You'll get a good look at it here. Clampett's got about two and a half, three car lengths, and a very good exit. I mean, not a noticeable advantage for Busa in second position off, but watch as he follows them. Look at the gap now, and just wait to the gap when they come to the start finish line. You're on board with the Aducci in third, and look how they gain on him. There's nothing that the 44 can do to deter these guys, and this time by, it is going to be possible six in the air two laps to go Clampett wants to hold the bottom I think that's because it gives him the best shot at defending his race lead into turn one might not necessarily be the line he takes coming to the checkered that time it works out though with Musa pushing him 13 down and two laps to go from Daytona and you can tell the drivers in fourth and fifth in Borden and Hartley, they're starting to get put a bit hungry. They've been quiet this entire past couple laps in this league group have not made really any moves to go up towards the lead. I wouldn't be surprised if they start being a bit more aggressive and hope they can get a strong enough run to get side by side by the strike. Just got to keep in that position. Meanwhile, that second group, that's also getting very dicey. And be, in part because of the diciness going on, they are still losing time. It's about a sec, just about a half a second difference between the first group and the second group, despite more cars in the second group. 
Yeah, they're about eight seconds off for the race leaders now. It is a fight for P6 that you're looking at with Wagner on the outside trying to hold off the three machine and uh, more side by side behind them with Lockwood and Fernier. Fernier, I uh, should say, in this group as well. I think these drivers realize the, the intervals of the lead group is not enough and they're going to fight for what they can get. There's really no point in cooperating with one another. It's every man for himself as they go way wide into that quarter, send some cones flying. And again, the best those drivers are going to be able to get is P6 as Wagner takes the wide exit. But these are the five cars that we are going to watch to the end now because the next time by only one lap remains. Clampett right now leads atop Busa, Iruchi, Borden, and Hartley. One, two, three, four, and five. Only the winner gets that VIP trip to the Rolex 24 and an opportunity to win a real-life Mazda test. There's one lap to go. Logan Clampett leads this one. We'll see how it plays out, Glenn. If you got to move up uh, your sleeve or in your back pocket, now is the time to show it, I think, as we see uh, to the outside of the racetrack goes the triple five. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see uh, Giuseppe Anucci doing so well, by the way. I raced with him when I first got on the service, so it's, been, it's awesome to see him up there. But, I, you know, I've noticed um, Boos has been really smart, and he's starting to help clamp it by pushing him and trying not to let guys around. I think he's trying to set up Logan. He wants Logan in the lead on the last lap, and he's trying to figure out this puzzle here. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't discount Boos on this final lap, uh, even though Anucci's trying to move to lead in, to turn one here. He's trying to get a move, but like that outside is not going to work. He's going to have to get way out of the gas. He about drove it off and into the grass, and now he's going to have to try to fight for third as here comes Hartley on the outside. This is the fight for position three. Inucci down low. The 33 of Hartley outside, and they're going to be pretty much dead even all the way down this back straightaway portion into turn four, which is this kind of left-hand kink right here, and then they'll head down to the back half of the infield portion in turn number five but the intervals is going to be the key thing to watch as these drivers look to set themselves up for what could be a race winning move it is still Clampett leading the group it is in second position Busa Hartley winning out that fight for third Iannucci scored in fourth and Michael Borden, who I would argue probably the quietest of this group, is going to be at the tail end of it. Fifth car in line as they get back up and onto the banking with one bus stop to go, which could be the decided moment here from Daytona International Speedway. Logan's got a big gap. I'm curious if that is really just Busa trying to lay back a little bit and then build up a big run. But none of this spacing is going to matter if you don't get a good exit on the bus stop. Certainly is all all over the back of Busa now is the 33 of Hartley. They get to clamp it, but they do not want to make the move into the bus stop. Here's the key moment. Can you get back to the gas at the right time? It is going to be a mad dash now. Back up and onto the banking in turn 12 to the checkered flag from Daytona International Speedway. Logan Clampett tries to hold off Busa. He'll do so. Now it's on the inside of the racetrack comes Robert Hartley. Hartley now pushing the 44 of Clampett down low. Going to be a photo finish from Daytona. Here comes Busa on Aiden topside. Contact with Logan Clampett. This one to be a photo finish down low. They're going to wreck across the start finish line. And at the stripe, he still had it. Logan Clampett, your unofficial winner of the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. What an end on the sim from Daytona, guys. My goodness, what a heck of a finish. And you heard there Glenn's reaction to that. Just, you could see Hartley was setting up for that moment to try and make the pass and end up having a bit of the bump traps going on. But a heck of a finish going through the glass, grass rather, to the point where drivers are asking themselves, how did you end up keeping the car stable enough to get to the start and finish line without spinning across the racetrack? A heck of a finish for Logan Clampett. Yeah, Glenn, give us your reaction on that. I mean, that's just a ton of fun to watch and extra entertaining when you consider what's on the line, but that's a fantastic finish. And, of course, we have to say the finish is unofficial, of course. Everybody going to have to take a look at it, make sure everything is okay. But as it stands, Clampett was able to do it. He held him off. All top five cars finished within 17 one-hundredths of a second of each other. 
Yeah, that was so awesome. It, it's so funny how this the simulator races work out almost exactly like the real life races are. It's really exciting to watch. You know, it almost seemed like Logan purposefully got his worst run ever off of the bus stop and forced uh, forced the other guys to push him down the straight, which you know kept him. Uh, I think kept him in a position where Busa couldn't have a draft. He's still getting a push, uh, but you know the guys behind are sort of moving his rear end around and uh you know it's it's risky but i think that's what he had to do and i think he played it out perfectly he is doing some celebrating and rightfully so as it stands clamp it your winner of the online final for the mazda hot lap challenge let's look top to bottom at your unofficial race results it is clamp it by 0.95 thousands of a second on top of Robert R. Hartley. Of course, all these drivers spinning and driving through the grass to the end. Matt Busa comes home third. Giuseppe Iducci comes home fourth. And Michael Borden rounds out your top five. Of course, that uh, will have uh, a little bit of a post-race review, but that's the results as of the start finish line. Also, Jake Vonderbade comes home in the number six spot. Brian Lockwood in seventh position tonight with Jeremy Robles in eighth spot. Gresham Wagner does end up P9 and rounding out your top 10 is Joshua Chin. Just outside the top 10, it was Luke Flipper alongside Jeff Lovell in the 12th spot. Bobby Zelensky worked his way from second to last up to 13th, but couldn't get up to the league group tonight. Travis Petrie and DJ Asandrini came away in the top 15. Matt Malone finished off 16th with Travis Swanky, Jonathan White, Nick First, and Cody A. Harris rounding out the top 20. Final car in the lead lap of this one is going to be Eric Garcia in the number 80 Dada Machine. The rest of these drivers out of this race. That includes Christopher Henn, Stephen Diem, of course, Joe Cole back there, uh, Tom Rathy with the uh, unofficial, uh, uh, or I guess I should say an unsatisfactory uh, result, P25. And then, of course, we documented earlier Wyatt Gooded with issues on the opening lap after starting second. He will round out your 26 car field. That is your look top to bottom at your race spot TV unofficial race results let's take another look at how all of this one came to be and get a second look on the race spot tv replay at the run down to the end of this race here's the pack coming through the bus stop and I'm gonna let you talk uh, us through it here as we watch these cars come to the line again oh i didn't know were you i didn't know you called me out there yeah so you yeah. can see logan he got a bad run there but he's himself in a position where the uh, where the car behind can give him a push and it makes it where Busa has no draft he has no option there so now he's covering off the inside uh, he's getting you can see here he's kind of getting uh, pushed around a bit from the rear which makes your rear end comes out and uh, they're just banging a bit and uh, Busa gets in the clamp it but they all cross the line uh, and Logan goes into the wall and spins but Busa rolling around but uh, you know in the end I think uh, the right guy won that race Clampett's car not going to do much now, but it made it as far as it needed to do. And again, that overhead shot really gave you a good look at all of the jockeying for position behind. But at the end of the day, it is your pole sitter who is in victory lane. We are track side with him now. Logan Clampett is your online winner of the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. Logan, congratulations. And tell us about this one. It was certainly a ton of fun to watch. I can only imagine what it was like behind the wheel. You had to have known that something like that was coming at the end. We saw... Uh, uh, many a times, Matt and those other guys making it 2-3 wide with you coming to the line. But, I, I mean, that last one was the one that you had to hold them off for, and you did. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, I don't even know what to say. That was that was so stressful the last lap because I knew, I knew they were going to get a run, and I knew I was just in a not a great position. So, in the bus stop, I tried slowing it down so they wouldn't get as big of a run on me so I could block. And it, it worked, thankfully. And uh, thankfully, Robert was on Busa's inside, and uh, Busa tried so hard to get side draft, and Robert was pushing me um, thanks to him. It was wiggling around my car a bunch uh, with all the bumper hooks going on, and I got bumper hooked into Busa. Apologies for that. And then it was just kind of on from there for the finish, and I just... Kept my foot in it to the start finish line, but I was I was just shaking so hard, especially on um, on my pole lap. I was shaking really hard going into the bus stop, and 
thankfully didn't screw it up. Well, certainly qualifying up front helps you out here because very early on we saw the top seven break away. How do you focus on the infield part of the racetrack knowing that I can only gain so much here? I can, you know, pull a half second on these guys if I have a really good infield portion. They're just going to catch me back out onto the bank. And so how do, you, how do you focus on not making mistakes, which will certainly hurt you on the inside while also preparing for obviously that inevitable run? And I mean, did you, did you test out that end at all? Were you blocking? Did you maybe consider, hey, maybe I don't want to lead this one coming to the end because it looked like in those final three laps, nobody wanted to pass anymore. They all sat single file wanting to be the ones going at you. Well, yeah, the strategy, I, I didn't really know what to do. I was figuring it out literally probably about 12, 13 of the 15 laps. And um, at the end there, I was like, okay, so if they're about half a second behind me out of the bus stop, then they get a massive run on me. They're, they're going to beat me. Even if I block second, coming to the checkered flag, third is probably going to get it. Just because of how big of a run they had, that's why I mentioned how I slowed it down in the bus stop so they would only be about two tenths behind me, something like that. So, um, but I, I was, yeah, the, that whole race, I was like, uh, what should I do? What should I do? And uh, one time there, and I don't know if it was my fault or, or what, uh, it was with Lo uh, Lockwood. I don't know if he kind of tracked out early, but I, I felt like I was holding my line, but... Uh, thankfully, we recovered from that and got back up to the front. We knew this was a racetrack that you were fast at. It was uh, the opening week of this hot lap challenge that you qualified into this race with the second best time from Daytona. You qualify on a pole, you get the win, and you will be representing the Oval Drivers at the 2019 Rolex 24 at Daytona with, of course, a shot at that real-life Mazda test, Logan. A long, hard-fought season for you. You're very busy on the iRacing service, but I'm sure this has got to rank pretty high up there. What's it like for you to win this race? And uh, we'll let you get out of here with anybody you want to say hi to. It's it's definitely one of my biggest wins. Um, hopefully, hopefully the officials give it to me. I kind of got forced down to the grass, um, but... Uh, I, I don't know. It's yeah, like I said, it's definitely one of my biggest wins, and I can't wait to go to Daytona and meet everyone there. It's gonna be an awesome experience. But um, thanks to JDR Graphics for uh, being on the car, and you guys for commentating and i racing mods to motorsports for putting all of this on. Uh, this is my third year uh, going for the road to uh, Mazda deal. Or I forget what it's called, but obviously this isn't the same thing, but we actually have a chance now to uh, to test one, uh, one in real life. So that's really awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. We wish you the best of luck when you get there and you get to hop back uh, on the simulator and uh, fight against the at-track uh, champ, Logan. But, uh, of course, we appreciate your time in this. Congratulations. You best stole 26 cars and, uh, what, you went at Daytona and uh, you're headed to Daytona. So congratulations again. Thanks for the time. And uh, we'll catch up with you and hopefully we'll uh, hear more from you and uh, how all that experience goes next year. Thank you, Evan. The race winner tonight from the Daytona International Speedway, Logan Clampett is your online champion for the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge, and it was close coming down to the end of this one. Matt Busa, who was in it all night, in fact, the best qualifier at Daytona in the regular season to make it into this 15-lap finale. He comes home third in that incredible finish, and tracks on with him is Justin. Thank you very much, Evan. Matt joins us now here uh, unofficially in the third spot tonight. It was a definitely close battle to the finish. How are you feeling tonight? Yeah, it's definitely disappointing. I want to say congrats to Logan, first of all. He, um, I've been racing with him for many, many years in Irish, and he's a good buddy of mine, so glad to see him get the opportunity he just earned. Now talk us through the final portions of that race with the final lap and how things have been had been playing out near three wide nearly every single time at the start and finish line. What was going through your head as you guys were going through three and four and trying to set up each hour up to try and go for the pass? Yeah, I mean, thinking about the last move started on lap, lap one, to be honest, coming uh, out of the bus stop, 
I was just taking mental notes on how far back I was in the leader and if I could pass them by the start finish line or not, if it would be better to be in second place, third place, to be the leader in the bus stop. And I figured it would be best to be second place or third. I couldn't really decide. And to have about a six to seven tenth gap to the leader. And uh, Clampett was pretty smart. He uh, maintained like only a two tenth gap in the bus stop. He took a really slow entry and forced me to be right on his bumper. So at that point, I just, my only chance was to go high through three and four. And unfortunately, didn't quite get the win there. Unfortunate for sure. Um, real quick, I mean, is there anyone you want to thank for, or anyone you want to mention here with tonight with the unofficial third place finish here in the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge? Yeah, just mainly a big thanks to Mazda and Iverson for giving us this opportunity year after year. I've done it for, I don't think it did four or five years they've done this now in a row. And um, it's a little disappointing to tonight because every year I've been in the finale in the different formats they've had. And I think a few years I wasn't chosen, you know, just for reasons of not having real road racing experience. So this is my one chance there to the winner takes all. It doesn't come down to what kind of experience you have. So it's a little unfortunate it was decided by draft per se, but you know, maybe next year we can do the same format at Laguna Seca or Mazda's racetrack, their home track. And yeah, just hope we can do it next year again. So thanks to Mazda, Iris Dane, you guys are broadcasting. Shout out to Team Conti, Gale Force, and Radicals Online. Thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on the unofficial third place finish tonight, Matt. Thank you. That was Matt Busa coming away in third spot tonight. Evan? A well, big thanks, Logan to Clampett and Matt Busa for giving us some time post-race. Uh, if you follow us at all on the iRace and Esports Network, you certainly know those two names. And uh, not at all a surprise that they made it into this. But also big thanks and a congrats to all the 26 drivers who made it into this one. Uh, at the end of the day, Glenn, you're the pro. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what were your, uh, maybe give us some final thoughts on what you saw to this one. I thought it was uh, tons of fun and uh, you knew the end was coming. You didn't know how it would play out, but we knew it was coming. And, uh, you know, Logan Clampett ends out on the other end of that thing you could rerun that final lap 20 times and i'm sure in, in, in any of those scenarios you know at 1.05 of those guys get a win uh but at the end of this one it's the 44 who comes out on top yeah i don't think anybody knew how that was going to play out but i think logan did a good job to sort of test the waters and and he made the right decision to sort of pack up the field going in the bus stop that was his only chance i mean he was the fastest guy through there but i think it was actually a hindrance for him um and he made the right play and you know i think it's great to uh that all these guys drove so well uh with with very little incidents actually with with how closely they're running but it'll be great to meet logan at daytona i'm really excited for him um i've been around the uh you know obviously with vip hospitality with mazda and he's going to have an amazing time it's a huge event and mazda has you know the prototype car there and they have one of the best hospitalities of any of the teams there. So um, he's going to have a wonderful time there, and I can't wait wait to meet him. It's going to be a great experience for him, and I think tonight as well, Justin, just marks another great night uh, for iRacing. Of course, we see tons of these events, and uh, we'll echo those thoughts. A big thanks to everybody over at Mazda and iRacing for making this possible, and uh, Logan Clamp is headed to South Florida come uh, 2019 for the uh, Rolex 24, representing the guys on the oval side of things for sim racing. Yeah, and that should be a great experience. But the main thing I want to emphasize, these drivers come back year after year, some of these drivers, to try and have that opportunity to go down to Daytona Beach for the Rolex 24 with the Mazda Hot Lap Challenge. Just a heck of a race tonight with a lot of strong competitors. It was a heck of a night tonight, that's for sure here, Evan. And we're so happy that everybody uh, was with us to be a part of this one. But that is it for us uh, for the virtual Daytona International Speedway. So on behalf of everybody behind the scenes here at Race Spot TV and I race it, all the folks who uh, work on the broadcast, the G, the camera angles, and all the stuff that you guys don't get to see on a night-by-night -night basis, we tip our caps to them. Uh, Andreas Werner, Simon DeGrossman, Nick Thiessen, of course, Eastman Ballo, and all of those good folks, of course, for your team tonight, for myself, Evan Pasoko. For Justin Prince, our special guest, Glenda McGee, and our director, Hugo Louise, we say thanks for
for tuning in. And congratulations to the 44 Logan Clampett. The unofficial results have him in victory lane. Clampett is your 2018 Mazda Hot Lap Champion. He'll head to Daytona in 2019. And we'll see what's next with him. Until next time, we say good night, though, from Daytona.